Hello friends, George here. Today we are going to continue my favorite video series on Albania. Um, today we'll talk about Tirana, the capital, because it was there that I was stationed the first two weeks of my stay during my trip that we are in question. However, before we talk about what happened during my trip, uh, let's go back in time and talk a little bit about Tirana's history. Tirana is a capital of Albania. It is centrally located, bridging the gap between the north and the south, because these are two geographic regions distinct from one another with two different cultures and uh, with two different dialects. It's one language, but the accent is different. Uh, and there are a few words that are different too. So, uh, the, now, uh, the north of Albania, by the way, is a more rugged terrain. The south is more, uh, it's less rugged. It's supposedly a more refined area, if you ask me. But uh, I, I'm biased because I'm a southerner. I, my family comes from the south of Albania. Uh, although I grew up in Tirana, which is exactly in the center of Albania. So... Anyway, Tirana is nestled in between mountains. It's a very mountainous country. Uh, yeah, the most prominent is called Mount Daiti. Now, Tirana was proclaimed the capital in 1920, eight years after Albania declared its independence from the Ottomans. Uh, but the region has had uh, settlements dating back to the Paleolithic era. Very few settlements uh, of Illyrian peoples there. Uh, you know, the archaeologists are always digging stuff up and they found some things and I, I'm sure they'll find some more things if they keep digging. But it was really in the 1614 that Tirana became officially designated as a city. Uh, at that time, a feudal lord from nearby Mulet, uh, he built a, a mosque, a bakery, and a Turkish bath in this city of 7,000. Uh, however, uh, we know that Tirana, in fact, over a hundred years earlier, had 13,000 people. So the so uh, it's funny that they consider this the beginning of Tirana when in fact there were many more people there earlier and, and by the time it got declared a city it only had uh, one third of its population remaining which is 7,000 it used to have 20,000 I believe in the 1500s now and and it continued to lose people it, it lost 8,000 more people uh, and by the year 1700 it had only 4,000 people uh, however by 1820 uh, You've got 8,000 8, more people, and it appears as if I have gotten into uh, some strange numbers game here with no meaning. But anyway, by 1945, uh, the population had boomed, the communists had taken hold, and it was a, a very coveted city to live in. Uh, but job opportunities were scarce you know? Moreover, the communists didn't really want to promote the, uh, the villagers into their city because they weren't very good people. And uh, it, it was the very dictatorial society. 
you couldn't just get a job and go there. You had to know somebody in the government and and so on and so forth. Now, uh, however, they did build some nice apartment buildings which are considered drab, but I've lived in those buildings and they were roomy. They were probably bigger than what I have here. <laughs> now, uh, uh, in the 2000s, Tirana got a new mayor, an artist, and he decided to paint the drab old buildings and today it's a rather colorful city. Uh, however, it's a very cramped city. There is just too much construction, if you ask me. Tirana uh, is really sprawling into every county it can find in the nearby area. It's even growing up the mountainside. An absurdity in and of itself. But that is Tirana. An absurd, eclectic 